Chaos and Mayhem. That's the name of this work of art by Charmaine Locke. This is a piece that she started in 2019. I first walked into her studio and saw it on her drawing board and was blown away uh, by it, quite literally. Uh, it is a blow-up kind of work of art, you know. It's uh, it's almost like a an ethereal kind of landscape or an underwater landscape, or it's sort of the uh, the the bloodbath in a way of the microscopic parts of humanity. I mean, there's a colorless rainbow in this landscape. One that's just kind of whitewashed out. There's wheels, axis, beasts, figures, uh, flow, rolling flow. The whole entire piece is just a alive with chaotic action. Chaos and mayhem may be more than just a sign of our times. Sow the wind. What happens when you sow the wind? Uh, you reap the whirlwind. As a, as a, as a phenomenon of belief, is sort of as a statement of metaphoric fact, I guess you would say. It's been with us for a long, long, long time. So the wind is a phrase that's been around for, I dare say, thousands of years. But <clears throat> there is an incredible uh, kind of misfortune, if you will, that comes from certain actions, from doing certain things, from setting uh, certain things in motion, that once the motion is started, then it just becomes, in, in essence, more than humanity can bear. Uh, it's all, it's like all things become in a giant colossal swirl um, of wind. This one is called The Fallen Ones. Charmaine is an incredible artist. Uh, she just has a, I guess you would say, like all artists in one sense, that do a particular thing, that have a particular point of view. Um, hers here in this case is about the downfall the downfall. Um, the fallen ones in this case are birds. Birds, the, the kind of the, the, the winged creatures that in, inhabit the earth. <clears throat> Painted here in red, blood, blood red, and all of the nature that <clears throat> it encompasses uh, in the kind of the reality of the brutalness of coming to a, an abrupt uh, end. These are pretty painful drawings in, in a lot of ways. Uh, beautiful in a pictorial sense, but at the same time metaphorically uh, very painful, very meaningful. This is one of my favorite drawings. Uh, two birds kind of lost in the, the universe of death. This is called The Unholy War. The Unholy War. My goodness gracious. Two creatures 
very human-esque, beast-like, you know, uh, battling, um, sword in hand, symbols in hand, beliefs in hand, sort of carrying their statements of belief in one hand and fighting with a, a sword in the other. How long has this been going on with humanity? Thousands of years, maybe hundreds of thousands of years. I mean, the question really is, is why, why, why do humans do this? I, I don't necessarily know that uh, the, the battles of nature are really about the same things as what the human battles are. This is an incredible, incredibly powerful uh, work of art. I mean, it is a bloodbath in every sense. And the sky is filled. The terrain is filled. It is two, two human-esque creatures on an island, on a rock, on a stone, uh, battling it out, battling it out. The uncivil war. What what would make a war civil? To be civil is not to war, but the civil war is when we fight each other, when we fight one another, when brother fights brother, a countryman fights countryman. The uncivil war, bombs bursting in air, Boy, this is an explosion of animals, birds, cellular reality, motion. Uh, it's all alive with kind of the organic realities of nature. She's a very powerful artist. There's almost as though there, there is a, uh, a legion of characters at the bottom of this work of art. The armies, the march of humanity across a terrain, hundreds, thousands, all engulfed in a, in a single battle. It's it's an it's a staggering explosion. The ultimate struggle. That's the title to this work. That's the uh, the name that is given to it. You know, in a strange kind of way, I I see Monet in here. They all over paintings of. The lily pond, this is like the all over painting of a struggle, a struggle with creatures, plants, landscape, water, blood, moisture, heavy, 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 moist kind of reality of a struggle between two creatures. I see these creatures in this case as female, whereas I saw the unholy warriors as, uh, as male. Uh, this is like a dance, like a very, very, very strange and hard, almost ritualistic dance that humanity repeats and loops through over and over and over why? why? Why is it that that's such a part of what we do? It's what a paradox, you know, that these two creatures would fight like that. This is called the whitewashing of truth. 
to tell you the truth, I, I, I could spend hours talking about this work of art. I mean, we have lived in a time of such absolute, genuine, raw hatred, prejudice in its ultimate degree, you know, hate and not even really knowing that by definition hate is in us. And to tell you the truth, a lot of the hate and the ultimate raw, just the sheer prejudice that humanity shows, a lot of it is, is cloaked within the church. It actually literally is. The church was in the center uh, of a lot of the, of, of the most brutal things that was ever done on this planet. Um, how do you make art about that? I mean, my God in heaven, huh? it's, it's, it's a tough, tough, brutal subject and one that's very offensive to a lot of people, yet is among us. It is with us. It's here. It's now. This one is called Into the Vortex. God, Into the Vortex, being sucked into the center, expelled from the center, pulled in, pushed out. It's almost like inhaling a mountain, being pulled into the core, breathing deep, <clears throat> inhaling with such power that there is an explosion that then has to necessarily take place just simply to relieve the pressure. I mean, here we are with a center, very brain-like, in the middle, you know, very, very organic and cellular, very powerful. Sometimes you don't even really know where to place something that is of such metaphoric force that it has such deep and meaningful uh, resonance in the human psyche that you don't even know where to put it you don't even know where to place it you know that it's it, it is almost like a spiraling egg-like circumstances that just completely pulls and explodes and then forces outward. This one's called Origins, the beginning. <clears throat> I mean, where, where, where is the electrical spark that starts it all? What is the generative force that actually starts it all? Again, it's all kind of shown in the egg-like forms, the nucleus in the center, a creature-like character that is blazing its outward circumstance around a, a, an almost glow, kind of giving life to a, to a glow uh, within the center of that glowing mass are, are forms of life, life that begin the origins of our existence. I mean, here we are dealing with it, and we deal with it forever. You know, we always put it within the context of our own personal now. It's the now in our world that we have to deal with, and it's the now that we question. But origins give rise to the fact that it's been there all along. 